Thank you so much, Nikolai and our worship team. Thank you for those that came so early to help with so many details, setting up things so that you and I can worship today. For the next several weeks, we are going to be looking at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 is pretty unique because not only are there parables, there are explanations about what some of the parables mean. And during the next several weeks, as we look at Matthew chapter 13, we will see seven different parables, all of the parables talking about the kingdom of heaven. And chronologically, it would make sense to begin with verse 1. But... In addition to something that's very unique in Matthew chapter 13, there is an explanation about the purpose of the parables. But if we look carefully at the purpose of the parables, it makes us consider our own hearts. Here is a candle that is made out of wax. Here is a cup that is made out of clay. If we take the candle made out of wax, and if we take the cup made out of clay, and we expose them to the glorious sunshine, what happens? The wax and the candle melts and softens. The clay in the cup hardens and becomes more solid and rigid. And when we look carefully at what Jesus says about the purpose of the parables, for some people, when they are exposed to God's holy word, it softens their hearts. Tragically, other people when they are exposed to the glorious sunlight of God's grace, become even harder. Now, not only in Scripture, but in all of life, have you noticed in your life that sometimes the very best people get the hardest assignments where you work? And have you noticed that contrary to that, some of the laziest, most worthless workers get the promotion. And it's just something that you say, that's not right. This is the very best person. They are the most committed worker. They are the ones. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about them. They should have been promoted, and yet they weren't. Meanwhile, this person was promoted, and was given honor. And there's something that you say, that's just not right. And yet it happens that sometimes the very best people in life get the hardest assignment. Whatever you are facing today, what is that doing to the condition of your heart? The same sun beats down. It makes a candle of wax become softer. It makes a cup of clay become harder and more rigid. Whatever is happening in your life today, what is the condition of your heart? In Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 10, Then the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables. Because seeing, they do not see, and hearing, They do not hear, nor do they understand. 
What is the purpose of the parables? Time and time again, a parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. Time and time again, as Jesus shares parables, He gives an earthly story, but ultimately there is a heavenly meaning. And as we go through all of chapter 13, we will see seven distinct parables where Jesus is explaining about the kingdom of heaven. So the purpose of the parables is something that should edify, is something that should build us up. Have you noticed the difference between inspiration and inoculation? Okay? Some people are inspired by God's Word. Some people are encouraged by worshiping together. There is inspiration that comes to them from worship. Some people, instead of inspiration, have inoculation. I went to the doctor. I got my flu shot. I'm good. I went to church. I did my things. I'm good. When I was a child, I attended such and such class. I had my shot. I'm good. There's a difference between inspiration and inoculation. And the problem of the people is a very sobering reality because there is this truth. The lost keep on losing. Not only do they lose during this lifetime, but they lose for all eternity. There are those who will sit faithfully in a church Sunday after Sunday. But instead of being inspired and transformed, instead of having an earthly story and understanding the heavenly meaning, instead of this happening in their lives, they become hardened and they turn against the gospel itself. Jesus continues in verses 14 and 15. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. The tragedy is that these people have been exposed to God's teaching. They've been exposed to explanation. They've been exposed to the possibility to come into a vibrant, loving worship experience. But instead, their hearts have just become callous. Isaiah chapter 6 is what the Bible is referring to in Matthew chapter 13, verse 14, when Jesus says, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah if you and I would turn to Isaiah chapter 6. In Isaiah chapter 6, we have one of the most awesome experiences of worship written about in the Bible. And in Isaiah chapter 6, beginning with verse 1, Isaiah is in the worship experience and he sees the Lord high and holy and lifted up And he hears the seraphim crying one to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. This is a man whose heart is completely consumed by worshiping God. And as we read Isaiah chapter 6, we see Isaiah cry out and say, I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. Woe unto me. And then there's a voice that says, who will go for us? And Isaiah says, Here am I, send me. And in the midst of all of that wonderful teaching, we have a biblical example of one of the best people in the world, 
getting one of the hardest assignments. Because when we read carefully, this man is told, okay, if you want to follow me, go and spend the rest of your life preaching and sharing my word. And every time you preach and every time you share, you are going to be rejected. Why is it that a man named Jonah, who didn't like the Ninevites, who ran away from the Ninevites, who got thrown into the sea and then got swallowed by a whale, why is it that a man who didn't even care about the people eventually got vomited up on the shore by the whale, went to the city and said, repent, And thousands of people repented. I don't know. I don't know why it is that some people get assignments that it just seems like they go from victory to victory regardless of the condition of their hearts. I don't know why that happens. I don't know why that happens in the church. I don't know why it happens at your school. I don't know why it happens in your family. I don't know why it happens where you work. That sometimes the people who don't care at all, they're the ones who get promoted. They're the ones who, quote, have success. While meanwhile, a man like Isaiah, whose heart is broken, who says, here am I, send me wherever you want to send me. God says, good, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go and be faithful. Verse 9. He said, go and say to this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Isaiah speaking in verse 11 said, Then said I, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes people far away, and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, and though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains when it is filled, the holy seed. Is it stump? What's happening to your heart today? Have you been given a hard assignment? You're not you're not complaining, but you're accurate. You're really not whining or pouting. You've done the analysis and you're correct. You've been given a tough assignment. But as you've been given that tough assignment, what's going to happen to your heart? You see, Jesus says to the disciples, when you hear the Word of God, it does its work quickly and effectively like it should. Unfortunately, when these people hear the Word of God, it only makes them harder. But you keep following the Word of God regardless. And so he goes on with verse 16 in chapter 13, verse 16 of Matthew. He says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. So there is the purpose of the parables. There is the problem of the people. There is the fulfillment of prophecy. And there is the victory of following Christ. We see all of that in these verses 10 through 17. And then if we let our eyes continue in Matthew chapter 13, if we go down to verses 34 through 35. 
All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. In the first verses that we read, it said explicitly that it was the prophet Isaiah. In this verse, perhaps your Bible has a footnote, but if it doesn't, the prophet that Jesus is referring to is Psalm chapter 78. And if you have your scripture today, and if you too will turn to Psalm chapter 78, you will see a heartbreaking psalm. Because in Psalm chapter 78, while there are many psalms that are full of glorious pictures, you see in Psalm chapter 78, there's it's called a mascal of Asaph. And if you look in 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1, there's a reference to the sons of Asaph who were set apart to be priests. And in chapter 78, excuse me, Psalm 78, verse 2, this is what Jesus is quoting when he says, I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. But then as we go through chap, excuse me, Psalm 78, it is a litany of God did this for the people and then they rejected him. God did this and brought judgment and yet the people rejected Him. God led the people this way, and they said, Oh, but can't you do something else for us? If you and I look through Psalm chapter 78, we come to the heartbreaking verse 32, when the Bible says, In spite of all this, in spite of all that God did, they still sinned. Despite his wonders, they did not believe. So he made their days vanish like a breath and their years in terror. When he killed them, they sought him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the Most High God, their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues, their heart was not steadfast toward Him. They were not faithful to His covenant. For you and I today, as we read about people in the Old Testament, as we read about people in the New Testament, we still face fundamental questions ourselves. Jesus continues to speak today. Will we listen And will we learn or will we reject him and keep on losing? The candle exposed to the sun, the cup of clay exposed to the sun, one becomes soft and gentle, the other becomes hard and rigid. As you and I come to experience worship, as you and I go through the experiences of our lives, what is the condition of our hearts today? Let's pray. Father, time and time and time again, you demonstrate your love, your mercy, your guidance, Father, in our lives. Father, as we follow you, help us, Father, to be those who benefit from your word. Help us, Father, to be those who are softened by Your 
events in our lives. Help us, Father, to be those who hear and understand. Those who see, Father, and rejoice. It's in your Son's name, Father, that we pray. Amen. Within your um, bulletin today, if you open up, there is something for you to consider. It's a, a worksheet constructing a testimony of God's faithfulness in your life. We can read about the people in Psalm 78 and we can say, why did they do that? We can hear the sad words of Isaiah chapter 6 and wonder, wow, why wouldn't people respond? We can see Jesus saying plainly, when I speak to you, you hear and you understand, but when I speak to them, they just become more dull. But instead of criticizing anyone else, as we look at Psalm 78 and consider that as a template in our own lives, consider doing this this week. Take this simple piece of paper, and you see five simple steps there. Take a few moments and list ways that God worked in your life before you accepted Christ. Reflect back on what God did for you. When we see the Israelites, and as they were led out of bondage and slavery, there was one thing after another that came against Pharaoh as Moses kept proclaiming, let my people go. And time and time again, God was working in the lives and in the circumstances of the people of Israel. How did God work in your life? What do you tell your children? I remember the time. Son, let me tell you this. I remember the time that God did this in our family. I remember the time, daughter, let me tell you. I remember the time, even though I was going away from God, He pursued me. Step number one, take a few moments and remember what God did in your life. Step number two, write down some of the key things that helped you to accept Christ as your personal Savior. There are people today who want to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior, but they've never had somebody else explain it to them and say, this is how you do it. Child, let me tell you, this is what was happening. This is how I accepted Christ. This is how I made Him my Lord and Savior. Step number three. What are some of the most recent ways not just in the past, not just when you accepted Christ, but in this past week. As you reflect upon it, regardless of the circumstances that you faced, how did God use those circumstances to demonstrate His faithfulness? And then number four, repent. Write out a confession. Just a personal thing between you and the Lord. Lord, when I think about what You did for me before I was even a Christian. Father, when I think about when I accepted Christ as my Savior. Father, when I think about what's just happened to me most recently. Father, when I think about my heart. Father, these are the things I need to confess to You. And then number five, share your own testimony with somebody in your home, in your workplace, in your neighborhood. Bear testimony to what God has done. Demonstrate to the world that Christianity is not just a matter of inoculation. There truly is power in the inspiration and in the transformation of God's work, God's Word, God's Holy Spirit in your life. Let's continue by singing.